and welcome back to another one of my seasonal recaps where I talk about all the books I read in a particular season. This was spring. It is almost summer and you can tell because the house is really hot and I'm sweating so hopefully I am not too shiny. <laughs> the first book I read this year was House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Maas. I have a very complicated relationship with Sarah J Maas. I made an entire video on this book, so you can go ahead and watch that. I won't talk too much about this. This is the second book in the Crescent City series. I thought the first one was okay. I enjoyed it in the same way I enjoy all Sarah J Maas books, where it's kind of like a bad train wreck that you just can't look away from. So it's very addicting, very trashy. I don't really care. It's fun. I somehow find myself reading all of them even though I recognize that they are not good. <laughs> this, however, was different in the sense that I did not fly through it. Normally I absolutely devour those books, but this one took me so long. I thought it was so slow, very boring, so much du ex machina at the end. I just could not even, only the last 30 pages are remotely exciting and it's also not that exciting because it's ridiculous and doesn't fit with what happens in the entire first part of the book. So I will continue this series, but I don't know. I'm just not for me. Two stars. The next book I read was Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly. This is my January book of the month pick. I sometimes pick the romance books if they don't have any good fantasy ones just because it's a nice palette cleanser between all of the really deep fantasies. I thought this was okay. Basically this centers around two characters who are on this cooking show which I thought was a very interesting setting and I also used to binge the crap out of Food Network so I felt like this was a nice homage to that part of my life. So one of the characters her name is Dahlia and she just got divorced and then the other character London is non-binary and they are kind of not out yet to their to parts of their family and so it's their love story and I thought both the characters were okay the plot was okay it was just all okay I enjoyed it nothing spectacular though nothing earth-shattering so if you just want something fun and you like cooking I think you would like this the next book I read was Shorefall by Robert Jackson Bennett and if you remember, I read the first book of this last summer, and I remember thinking that it would be something I would have loved if I'd been in the right mindset when I read it. I was in very bad mood all week, so I wasn't like paying that much attention to the book as I should have been, And but I picked up the second one anyway, and this one was so much better. Basically, this is a fantasy world that is also kind of tech Nicole and you know engineering machines that kind of thing and they have this magic system called scrivings where you can basically write instructions onto different inanimate objects so that they behave differently and one of the main characters can kind of manipulate those scrivings to get them to do different things so it's very interesting because it's kind of science-based as well so I enjoyed that more in this book than I did in the first one because it took me so long to kind of understand what was happening in the first one and not as much with this one I really like the care all the characters a lot. They mesh really well together. There were some sad parts. The next one comes out in a couple months and I am very excited to read this. I think I gave this one four and a half stars and I hope that the next one will be five stars to close out the series. The next book I read was The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri and I had heard so many good things about this on Book Talk and normally Book Talk's fantasy recommendations are okay. It's their other recommendations that I'm like, mm, probably shouldn't have read that, wasn't for me. I thought that this was the most boring book I have read in years. <laughs> I literally DNF'd it. I never DNF books. I always try to push through because there's at least some part of it that's interesting enough to me that I'm going to finish, but this was not the case. I got to page 226 out of 525 and I was like I just cannot do this anymore. Basically it follows this character who's becoming this kind of like maidservant to this princess who's in prison for some reason that I never really figured out and Priya who is the maid had some sort of complicated past where she had to give up this magic power that she had. I didn't really understand the magic system either. I didn't feel like it was that well explained. The only interesting part of this book was this kind of plague that was starting to turn people into trees or plants and slowly killing them. I thought that that was super interesting and I wish that that had been more of the primary focus but literally 225 pages in all they had done was just walk back and forth between the city and this you know prison temple thing and I don't know, I just could not get into it, did not connect with the characters that much, and I thought it was boring. The next book I read was another book of the month pick, and that was The Cartographers by Peng Shepard. I really, really, really liked this, partly because I love maps, 
basically this is about a young woman whose father dies. He's a cartographer at the New York Public Library and when she goes to clear out his things because they're estranged, they hadn't talked in many years because of an incident that had happened 10 years prior, she finds this map that was the cause of their estrangement many years before and it kind of sends her down this rabbit hole of secrets and this magic world. And I thought the way that the magic system was kind of interwoven with maps and cartography was really interesting. I can see how a lot of people didn't enjoy this. It is an adult book, but a lot of the characters do kind of read a little bit immature and some of their relationships with each other are not super well developed, but I thought that the world was interesting enough and I did like the main character and I did actually like the ambiguous ending. And so overall, I really enjoyed this. It was a good mystery, very quick, fun read. So I recommend this. All right, the next book that I read was The Quick Silver Court. I had read the first book in another one of her series and didn't really enjoy it that much. This is the second book in her second series. And I did really like the first book a lot. And so I was very happy that I continued this because this was a five-star read. Normally second books struggle a little bit, but apparently I'm having good luck with second fantasy books this season because this was spectacular. It was literally just plot from start to finish with amazing character development. I love the main character in this. I really like all the side characters. But basically this follows a girl named Rix, who is the daughter of the warden of this city place tower. And in the first book, she accidentally releases this demon, which is given on the back cover. So that's not really a spoiler. And in this book, it's kind of her and her team trying to figure out how to deal with all of these demons that are now all over the world. And all the demons are based off of different like bad traits. So there's like the demon of discord, the demon of wrath, the demon of hunger. And so that's all super interesting. And there were a lot of really good reveals in here that literally left me open mouths. So I definitely recommend the series, especially if you read her other series and weren't as big of a fan of it. I think this one's better. I DNF'd another book. This is so rare. This is The Eyes of Tambura by Maria Snyder. I loved her Poison Study series. I hadn't read any of her other stuff, but then I saw that she came out with a book that was unrelated to the Poison Study world, and I thought that it would be really good. It was not. I think I only got to page like 50 or 60. It's a YA, but and so was Poison Study, but Poison Study didn't read like a YA. Her characters were very mature. This was basically kind of like Indiana Jones, but like toned down by 20%. It's about this researcher who specializes in these different documents. And there's this city that kind of goes underground because the desert is so hot and she gets like kidnapped by this water prince dude because water is, you know, a big resource. And then she was supposed to be hunting down this like trinket or something that got stolen. But I just, I, I can't even explain exactly what it was, but I just seriously did not get pulled into it at all. This literally read like a, her, like a debut novel. I could not believe that this came out after the Poison Study. This is probably like her 10th or 12th book. Maybe even more than that. It seriously, the writing was so immature. It felt so much like a debut novel and I just could not tolerate it. And my biggest read of this season was the entire Bridgerton series. I became obsessed with the TV show back in February before the second season released. And then after I watched the second season, I decided to read all of the books. I am not gonna show all of them here because I didn't feel like carrying them downstairs from my office because there was a lot of them. But generally, I really enjoyed them. They rated anywhere between like 2.8 stars to 4 star, 4.10 stars to me. I liked the second one, Anthony's story, and I liked the seventh one, which is Hyacinth's story, and I liked Francesca's story. Those were my top three. The rest of them were all kind of just okay. I had some problems with Benedict, had some problems with Penelope and Colin because it was just so boring. So you can watch my video on that. I did a whole video on that series if you want, but I did read the entire series. The next book I read was The Girl in the Mountain by Mark Lawrence. I read his Red Sister series, which is Red Sister, Grey Sister, Holy Sister a couple years ago, and I really liked that. This is the second book in the spin-off series to that series, which starts with The Girl in the Stars. This is The Girl in the Mountain. And the first book was okay. I didn't think it was as good as the Red Sister series, but I literally waited a year to read this because I didn't want to buy the hardcover and it was over reserved at the library. And so I waited for the trade paperback to come out because the hardcover was so expensive. It was like $32 and this was 10. So 
we take those. This world is way too complicated to explain without giving too many spoilers because it's so interconnected to the first series, but basically there's this planet called Abbott and there's this corridor where it's not covered in ice and then the rest of the planet is covered in ice. And so the first series takes place in the corridor, which is just like green and you know like our normal world and then the second series takes place mostly on the ice with the ice tribers and Yaz and that is her story but they are so connected it's even connected to some of his other works too that I have not read so it's a crazy really in-depth series so the magic system you're born either with no powers or with one of four things you're either a Marjul, a Hunska, a Garant or a Quantal. And the Quantal allows you to walk this thing called the Path, which gives you kind of giant bursts of energy powers, Marjul, kind of like Avatar, you can like bend one of the elements basically. A Hunska makes you really fast and then a Garant makes you really like big and strong. I think I would have enjoyed it more if I'd read it back to back with the Red Sister series and then the Book of the Stars and then this like back to back. There was so much stuff that I'd kind of forgotten. He does this really cool thing though where at the beginning of every book he does this like the story so far and then gives you like a three page summary of everything you need to know before the book starts, which is literally my favorite thing ever. I wish more authors did this because basically he says like, I don't want to make the characters say or think things that they already know just to explain it to the readers. So I'll just give you a summary because I know it's been years since you read the last one. And I'm like, thank you. So without that, I would have been very lost probably because I would have forgotten a lot of what happened. The next book that I read was This Woven Kingdom. I've read other stuff by her. She's the author of the Shatter Me series. I only read the first book and I thought it was okay and I, a couple years ago and I just never finished it. So this was the most boring, I wouldn't even say boring, the, mo the slowest YA fantasy I've ever read in my entire life. I'm serious, like the first 300 pages are just the main character who is a maid going about her maid business and then the other main character who's a prince going about his prince business and they like encounter each other literally once and there's one like inciting incident on page like 60 but then it doesn't even like <coughs> make an impact on the plot again until page 300. It's literally just people like sitting around doing their jobs and talking. The last 100 pages were decently exciting and if the entire book had been as exciting as the last 100 pages I might be convinced to want to read the rest of the series but the way that this was, I just could not get into it for so long. It was still okay, but her writing was so over exaggerated for no reason. Like her sentences felt like I was reading literary fiction. There's no reason to write a YA fantasy with that level of literary whatever. It just makes it feel really like inflated and like the authors full of themselves, you know? Like, let me just open to a random page and read you a paragraph and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Indeed, most hours of the day, Eliza could hardly believe who she'd become, how far she'd strayed from the plans once held for her future. Long ago, there'd been a blueprint for her life, a quiet infrastructure designed to support who she might one day be. She'd been left little choice but to abandon that imagined future, not unlike a child shedding an imagined friend. All that remained of her old existence was the familiar whisper of the devil, his voice growing under her skin at intervals, snuffing her life of light. It's just very over the top. Finally, I read The Girl in the Moon by Mark Lawrence. This literally just came out like a month ago and I did get it from the library, woo. We're going back to the library, boys and girls. That is the goal of 2022. So this is the third book and final book in the Girl in the Stars series. Like I said, all the stuff before about The Girl on the Mountain applies to this book. This book was incredible. This was definitely a five-star read. I think it helps that I read it right after The Girl on the Mountain. So I actually remembered everything that had happened in that book, which made this one more interesting. This is kind of set like in the past compared to Red Sisters. So some of the characters that you see in that series appear here as their younger selves. So I always love when that happens. It's really cute, either the future or the past. It's nice to see characters from an original series reappear again. And I thought that this was a great conclusion to the entire master plan that he's laid out for all of these books for years and years, even though I didn't read some of the other ones, but I read enough to see the master plan and I wish that there were more books set in this world but I'm pretty sure he's done and this is it and I liked all the characters a lot. The arcs were all wrapped up nicely. I approve. All right everyone that was what I read this spring. Thank you very much. Let me know which one of these you think you want to read yourself or your thoughts if you have read any of them and I will see you next season. Bye! No.